In this video, what I want to do is discuss the OR probability rules. And in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to get, do an example using playing cards. So there are two OR probability rules. So if it says the probability of A or B, where A and B just represent any two events, so it might be something like the probability of selecting a 5 or a 6, then you are going to use one of these two rules. The first rule occurs if the two events are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means that there's no overlap between the two. So for example, if I said the probability of a 7 or a 10, the card is either going to be a 7 or a 10. It can't be both a 7 and 10 at the same time. So if they can't occur at the same time, they are known as mutually exclusive. And some other textbooks call this disjoint. Um, so the rule is, if I'm trying to find the probability of A or B, I simply take the probability of the first event and I add it to the probability of the second event. If they are not mutually exclusive, that means that they both occur at the same time or can occur at the same time, then we use the rule the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So in case your textbook does it symbolically, I do want to discuss that the probability of A or B could also be written as A or B. And the AND probability in some textbooks is written as the probability of A and B. Okay, so you can write it either in word form or symbolically. Either one will um, means the same thing and are both are acceptable. So in case you don't understand the distribution of playing cards, I went ahead and included a, vi a visual in here. So this is just a standard deck of 52 cards. There are four suits. Uh, the first suit is diamonds. The second one is clubs, hearts, and spades. Diamonds and hearts are always red cards. Clubs and spades are always black cards. Okay, the face cards are the jack, queen, and king. So there's three of each suit, which means that there's a total of 12 face cards. And they're called face cards because they have a face. And the ace can either be considered as the high card, or it can be considered as the low card and be a one. So um, it just depends on which game you're playing. Sometimes ace is a one, and sometimes it's also the high card. In some ga games like poker, it could go with the 10, jack, queen, king, and ace um, to get a straight, or it could be used as a one, and you could do a straight with a one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so different rules use different things for the ace. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of the probability rules. And like I said, um, I did include the visual in case you don't know what playing cards look like or what the distribution looks like. So for the first one, what we have is we're looking for the probability of selecting the following out of a standard deck of 52 playing cards. So the first one we're looking for is the probability of selecting a two or a face card. And you could write it like this in word form, or you could say that event A is a two and event B is a face card, and you could write it symbolically as P of A, the probability of A or B. I personally like to write it better in word form. It just makes more sense to me, um, and that way I don't have to remember to define what event A and B represent. Okay, so if we look up here in our distribution, we can see that we have four twos out of 52. And we have um, a total of 12 face cards out of 52 playing cards. And these are going to be mutually exclusive because they cannot occur at the same time. So I would just do the probability of A plus the probability of B, and that's it. And then as far as writing your answer goes, um, because these have a common denominator, I can just add the numerators together. So 4 plus 12 gives me 16 out of 52. It is perfectly acceptable in probabilities to leave it as an unreduced fraction. If you would prefer, you can always reduce this to 4 over 13. 
or you could also write it in decimal form. This is approximately 0 0.3077, or you could write it in percent form. It really just depends on what information you're trying to portray. Sometimes it's better to leave it as a fraction, sometimes we'll leave it as a decimal, and sometimes we'll convert it to a percent. So it really just kind of depends on the situation and what you want to relay to somebody else. All right, so let's look at our next example. The second example is that we are looking for a red card or we are looking for an ace. Okay, so a red card, since you can see that we have 13, so there are 13 of each suit, Okay, so the red card, since I have 13 that are diamonds and 13 that are hearts, I would add those together, and we can see that this is going to be 26 out of 52. Okay, in ace, we can see that this occurs four times, so I have four aces out of 52. Okay, and because of the fact that if you look at it, we have aces that are also red, we included these red aces in the count of diamonds as well as in the count of hearts. And then we also included it when we were counting our aces. So we don't have a total of four or um, yeah, four red aces. So what we have to do is subtract out the overlap. So we have two of them that are red because I, I counted the two red aces here and the two red aces here. So I only have two of them total. So I have to subtract out. So these ones are not mutually exclusive. So we would have to use the other rule, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of both. Okay, so then if I simplify, I would get 26 plus four is 30. 30 minus two gives me 28. And like I said before, it is okay to leave it as an unreduced fraction. If you would prefer, you could write this as a reduced fraction because I can divide both 28 and 52 by four. This would reduce to seven over 13. Or if you would prefer to write it as a decimal, it would be 0.5385 or 53.85%. So like I said, any one of these is an acceptable way of writing it. It really just depends on your preference. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna give you two to try on your own to make sure that you understand how to do it. So I want you to find the probability of selecting a face card or a club, and also the probability of selecting a nine or a five. So you could go ahead and write those down. If you need to, I will go up in just a second to the face cards so you can see them again, If that, or up to not just the face cards, to the distribution of the cards so you can see what that looks like. So once you've written down these two, pause the video and then try the two problems. Okay, here are the cards just in case you need them to answer the questions so you could pause them here as well. All right, so let's go ahead and go over these now that you've tried them on your own. We are going to do the probability of selecting a face card or a club, okay? Um, for this one, we can see that we have a total of three face cards. Sorry, I'm selecting the wrong one. Three face cards that are clubs, okay? So because of the fact that these can occur at the same time, we would have to do the subtracting out. So total face cards, we have 12 out of 52 because we have three face cards times four suits. Clubs, remember we have a total of 13 out of 52. And then we have three of them that overlap, that are included in both of those. So if we simplify, we get 22 over 52, 
or 11 out of 26, or we could say approximately 0.4231 or 42.31%. And then the last one that I asked you to try was the probability of selecting a 9 or a 5. And we can see that there are 4 out of 52 cards that are 9s, and we have 4 out of 52 cards that are um, fives, and because these cannot overlap, we do not have to subtract the values out. So if I add this up, I get 8 out of 52, which again, you can simplify to 2 over 13, or approximately 0.1538, or 15.38%. Depending upon uh, the homework platform that you're using, sometimes they will make you write it in decimal form, sometimes they'll have you write it in percent form, and sometimes they'll say to write it as a fraction. Okay, so all of these are acceptable ways of writing probabilities. Just remember that when you are doing or probabilities, you need to ask yourself, can they occur at the same time? Um, which would mean they're not mutually exclusive, or um, can they not occur at the same time? there is no overlap, then they would be mutually exclusive. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.